Hello, my name is Alex Isles and welcome to the Great North Museum in Newcastle where we're going to be looking at some Bronze Age artefacts right now. Now when we've got these amazing Bronze Age artefacts right in front of me we can see the wonderful beakers. Now right here these are the ones that gave their name to the new population group, the beaker people that migrated into the British Isles around about 2500 BC. When they migrated in they were a brand new population group and as we've covered in a previous video they replaced the Neolithic farmers and when they replaced the Neolithic farmers they became the sort of the blueprint for the genetics of the British Isles. When they became the blueprint for the genetics of the British Isles their culture then continued but was inspired by other cultures probably around the rest of Europe that would then trade with them and then create what we'd eventually know as the Iron Age Britons or what's more commonly known as the Celts. When you've got this culture right here, you can see these beautiful beaker containers. And the theory is that these are either food containers or alongside that as well, they may also be beer containers as well. And they go from absolutely massive sizes, as you can see at the top right up there, right the way down to the smallest ones just there at the bottom with number 21. They probably had a lot more diverse usage than we recognize today simply because of the fact that we don't have that connection because there was almost a break in history between them and us caused by the Roman period. When there's that break in history, we don't even know that much about their language, their culture, how they interacted with people, and we can only just sort of barely work out the small little bits of history by putting together their items and having a look at them today. But these were often found in combination with burials. So when people were buried, they were put in the ground and sometimes they were either used as an item that would be put alongside an inhumation or a body in the ground buried there, or they would be put alongside a cremation. And when they were placed alongside a cremation, uh, the cremation would be put inside one of these containers and then left in the ground there. And that's because there was a shift in cultures throughout the Bronze Age. Sometimes you'd see that cremation was more popular, other times inhumation, and there's a change over time as well between the use of cysts and the use of cairns and communal cremations. So those are some of the cool items there. Right here as well, where you can see numbered 28 right the way down to 24, we see wonderful little bits of jewellery directly in front of me here. And this is a jet necklace that was discovered alongside a burial and then was reconstructed for the museum. I believe the original is in the British Museum itself. But this is an example of the beautiful jewellery that the new Beaker people population were using. They had taken this jet, and jet is an amazing stone, which is actually magnetic. It's very similar to coal, but a slightly different um, transformation occurs, whereas the organic material from ancient times can either go down one route and become coal, or down, down another route and become jet. And when it becomes that way, it is then brought out of the ground and it has this beautiful polished look to it that is a wonderful item. And this is used often for jewellery and things like that right the way through to the Roman period and even to today where it had a sort of a renaissance again during the Victorian period. A lot of the jet found up here in the northeast of England is either from Robin Hood's Bay or from Whitby. So we can presume a trade network from the area there brought this item into the northeast of England and it was worn by someone, either possibly like a, a high status chieftain or a female person as well, such as maybe a priestess or a chief, uh, um, a female chieftain because we, uh, we know that there is a possibility that the society back then had female leaders just to the same high status as male leaders, which was then again broken by Roman society, which was very patriarchal. So this could have been a day-to-day -day item that someone is wearing around the place, showing their status, or it's just a beautiful piece of jewellery in its own right. And so you have this beautiful jet necklace that was probably worn on a day-to-day -day basis by this high-status individual. And because of the fact it was magnetic, it would have, you know, like almost a magical property to it. It would feel like a very magical item that someone would wear on a day-to-day -day basis. You can also see wonderful items of gold right here as well. Some of these are little um, sort of beaded gold necklaces where you would have the gold hanging off it. Some of them are hair lockets as well. So 31, 
27 and 20. You can see next to those numbers, items of gold. Those are lockets probably used to keep hair together. Much like today people use hair bands, these would have been used to keep the hair of a Bronze Age individual together and they would have really caught the eye of someone who was standing nearby. Not only that, they're probably wearing bronze and copper jewellery as well. So you've got the reddish copper, the more golden colour bronze and the actual gold itself all together on the person. And you can imagine this person would have been very, very beautifully decorated with all of these items on themselves. Again, these have been found in burials. So these are personal items that have been left by someone and put into the burial so that the person has something with them, probably to take into the next life as they have those beliefs as well. So these items here show that the Bronze Age had a very decorative art style. We've got these beautiful dotted uh, marks on the beakers themselves. You've got the zigzag chevrons and all of these other beautiful pieces of art, as well as the personal jewellery, which is now far more common in the Bronze Age, more so than it was in the Neolithic, and definitely more so than we see in the uh, Mesolithic as well. And so when you've got these different items, you can see people are decorating themselves, they've got spare time we've got craftspeople who are producing these wonderful items right here and people are wearing these on a daily basis and the bronze age society is a very colorful very ornate society with wonderful items that people are wearing on a day-to-day -day basis so i really hope you've enjoyed this episode and i've been able to bring some of the items to life from the beakers that the bronze age people are famous for right the way through to some of the personal jewelry that people would have been wearing on a day-to-day -day basis as well so thank you very much for watching. As always, please do like and subscribe, share the videos with your friends. And alongside that, if you would like to, please do support me on Patreon as well. Until next time though, have a lovely rest of your day and thank you very much.